Overcoming Textbook Fatigue by Eric Roberts and Rachel Rollins. Why does engagement matter? Engagement turns any text from boring into something that is alive with possibility of finding what we need to know. Allow students to do just one of the following. Select a section of text to read, then jigsaw what they learned. Choose an assessment format that they feel will best demonstrate their knowledge. Use class time to finish reading. Find an example in the text or reality to support an inference or fact. Engaging students through social interaction. Students who work in small groups take significant responsibility. Most scored significantly higher on content area tests. Those students who sit in rows so they won't talk, talk to peers while listening can be damaging. They report a lack of interest and decreased motivation. Two prongs to the concept of engagement through social interaction. First, collaborative learning. Natural result of having students solve problems together or engage in inquiry learning. Second, social engagement. Wisdom and synergy that comes from being part of a group with a common goal or task. Assessing background knowledge. Before beginning any chapter or unit, it is essential to find out what students know about the topic. What students know is difficult to predict without some objective measure. Ways to assess individuals' background knowledge. Prediction guides. Teachers provide students with written statements related to the text before reading. Carousel walk. Allows students to walk around the room and work in groups as they share background knowledge. And free discussion. Allows students to choose groups and throw out a question related to the reading. Building background knowledge. Some textbook scavenger hunts. Use picture books to build background, building background virtually, building background through experiences, virtual field trips, and reading as a background builder. Model of good textbook vocabulary use. Textbooks should approach vocabulary by previewing a word and connecting it to students' background defining the word in a student-friendly way, giving an example of how the word is used, and using it in various ways several times in a chapter. Effective practices for teaching vocabulary. Vocabulary study. Instruction should help students relate new vocabulary to their background knowledge. Instruction should help students develop elaborated word knowledge. Instructions should provide for active student involvement in learning of new vocabulary. Instructions should develop student strategies for acquiring, acquiring new vocabulary independently. Relate new vocabulary to background knowledge. Vocabulary mix-up. Use it for introducing major topics that rely on specific vocabulary associated with the concept. Questioning cards. Direct students to use the back of the card to respond to a prompt. The six step process for teaching new terms and elaborate meaning of words. Step one is to provide a description, explanation, or example. Step two is ask the students to restate the description, explanation, or example into their own words. Then ask the students to construct a picture, symbol, or graphic that represents the term. Step four is to engage students periodically in activities. Next, you periodically ask students to discuss the terms with one another. 
And finally, in step six, involve students in games that allow them to play with terms. Process for teaching continued. Create active vocabulary instruction, provide experiences, engage students in focus discussions, and use online tools. How to choose effective reading strategies and activities. One, making connections. Two, asking questions. Three, visualizing and making inferences. Four, determining what is important and separating that from what is less important. And five, summarizing and synthesizing. When and how to teach a strategy. The best time is when you think students may need to use it. And the best way is to teach explicitly with plenty of modeling. Useful tips as you teach reading strategies. Comprehension strategies, strategy charts, demonstrate, practice, and remind. How to help students read to learn. Before, during, and after is a good mantra for teaching students to read any text in your discipline. Before reading, Invite students into the text. During reading, help students become active readers. Recognize active reading in textbooks. Model how to ask questions. Teach note-taking. Demonstrate talking back to the text. Allow opportunities for discussions. And after reading, help students by choosing the best activities. What if they can't read? Show students how to become aware of when they are not getting it. Teach them strategies to monitor comprehension and increase students' self-efficacy by assuring them we all could eventually find a text that would prove too difficult for us to easily comprehend. Reflective Writing to Learn Assignments when students write reflective pieces about what they are learning and how an interactive notebook. Such a metacognitive activity will help the students reflect on how they come to understand challenging texts and allows them the freedom to inquire and discover without fear of getting a bad grade. The components of effective writing are as follows. 1. Content and Scope 2. Organization and Development 3. Audience and Communication and 4. Engagement and Choice Effective Writing Model how to organize and develop ideas Strengthen textbook assignments by giving students information about how they can organize and develop their ideas provide an authentic audience. Writing assignment with real and not a pretend audience will engage students in their writing and may inspire them to produce a better piece. Effective writing continued. Offer students choices. Not too many to overwhelm them and not too few to restrict the flow of their thinking and writing. Have students keep a page of their learning logs for writing ideas. An important part of writing is discovering what you want to say and how to say it. Tools for content area writing. Interactive notebooks, learning logs, journals, and writing activities. Writing isn't always perfect. Provide feedback, use digital writing, blogs, wikis, and Google Docs. Deep study can be accomplished more easily when teachers 1. Focus collaboratively on how to help students apply knowledge within and across disciplines. 
and two, use the textbook as one of the many resources to help students learn concepts rather than only facts. Text set tips. Incorporate student created contributions. Have students preview the chapter, allow students to print photographs, and include reading materials across broad levels. Put out a call to parents and other teachers. Engaging in inquiry. Immerse. Invite curiosity. Build background. Find topics and wonder. Investigate. Develop questions, search for information, and discover answers. Coalesce. Intensify the research, synthesize the information, and build knowledge. And finally, go public. Share learning, demonstrate understanding, and take action. Successful collaboration. Students are involved in discussions as contributors and responders. The contributions are coordinated instead of consisting of many independent conversations. Students are generally on task, and students' eye gaze and body movement indicate their attention. Advantages of textbook-free schools Students become critical readers, students become independent learners, and students learn through interdisciplinary instruction. So how to make the transition? Find the right principle, incorporate community, and collect resources. These are our references. Um, overcoming Textbook Fatigue, 21st Century Tools to Revitalize Teaching and Learning. And there are eight chapters, and the page, first page starts on page 11, and there's 159 pages. Thank you.